Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. This is another video in my course on programming in JavaScript and Node, uh, Node.js. In this video, we're going to do something that's completely optional. You don't need it to follow the course, but it's a really good thing if you do do it. And that is we're going to set up a Git repository on GitHub, and that's going to be where we're going to store our code. So um, if you go to github.com, Uh, so GitHub is, is, when you go to it, you're going to see something different to this. I've already created an account on there, but um, let's maybe see if I can just log out so I can see something more like what you'll see when you go to it. So you'll see this. Um, create a free account on there. Now, uh, what is this? Well, we're going to use version control software called Git. You don't have to uh, to follow this course, but I am going to. Um, and uh, Git stores your code somewhere. It's going to store it in what we call a remote repository. And github.com allows you to create remote repositories for free. So you can store your code and you can either make it public or keep it private completely for free, at least at the time I'm making this tutorial. So um, create a free account on there and sign into it. And then uh, you're going to want to create a new repository. So your screen might look different to mine when you sign into Git, because I've been using this uh, for, for quite a while, as you can see. But somewhere you'll find a button to create a new repository, and you need to click that. Okay, you need to give it a name. So I'm going to call this Node.js, I think. That will probably do the trick. Why not? Yeah. Uh, and you can type a description of it if you want. Um, source code for JavaScript and Node.js for beginners course. Up to you what you put. Uh, you can choose to make it public or private. If you're embarrassed about people seeing your code, you might want to make it private. Um, I'm going to make mine public so that you can look at my source code examples here. You can um, add a uh, a readme file if you want. That's always a good thing to do. I'm going to tick to say yes, I want a readme file in there. You can always add it later. And then there's this git ignore file. And what this is, um, it's a file that contains lists of files that are going to be present in the directory that you're working in, but you don't want to store them in your source code repository. And there are various um, standard git ignore files that we can use here. I don't know if there is one for JavaScript. Nah, I don't know. I thought there was actually. Yeah, there's one for Node look. So if you search for Node um, and select that, that's a good one. Uh, license, you can change that as well. I'll, I'll use the MIT license, which as far as I understand means anyone can use my source code for anything. I'm not sure if they even have to attribute, attribute me, but I don't care here. Uh, you can use my source code f for this course as you see fit. And then when you've done all that and decided on all that, just click Create Repository. And this doesn't usually take long. Here we go. So um, this is a source code repository, uh, which um, we're going to check code into as we go along. Now, I'm going to click this clone or download button, and I'm going to just copy this, um, this URL here. And I'm going to go to my terminal. Now, we can actually do this, I believe, from within Visual Studio code. I haven't looked up how to do that, but to do what I'm about to do, you don't have to use the command line. You can use a variety of tools uh, that, you know, Git user interfaces, but I'm just going to do it on the command line. Here I'm using a bash terminal. So if you're using a Windows console instead, you want to probably spend a, a little bit, just a little bit of time just checking how to use that sort of basic usage of it. Um, Windows the Windows console by default will tell you where you where you are. It says like C colon slash, whatever. It, it tells you where you are in the directory structure. And you're going to need to just understand the directory structure thing to follow this course, you know, but that's just basic sort of computing. If you've played with a computer for a while, you'll know what a directory is and so on. Okay, so in Bash, though, uh, it may or may not show you where you are by default. You can find out by doing PWD. So if you are using Bash... Uh, you can type PWD and it'll tell you where you're located in the directory structure. To change directories in Bash, 
I think it's the same in Windows. You just do CD space and uh, the directory that you want to change into. Um, you always need that space in Bash, though. I think Windows lets you do CD dot dot to go to the directory above, but that doesn't work in Bash. You need CD space dot dot. Pretty similar, really. That's change directory. Uh, so if you play with that for a bit, you'll get used to it. So I can go to the directory above. Um, in Windows, I do dir, if I remember rightly, to see what's in here. In, in a bash terminal, I can do, whether it's on Windows or not, I can do ls. Shows me where I am. And I'm just going to change into this directory here. On bash, usually you can use tab as well to autocomplete um, directory or file names. All right. So anyway, I'm in I'm in a directory where I'm uh, I want to put my work, and I've got Git working in here, so I can use Git. If I type Git, it actually does something, and I want to do Git clone, clone, and then paste in that URL, hit return, and this is going to take my remote repository and basically um, create a local version of it. So if I do ls now, or um, dir, I suppose, dir, I suppose it will be in Windows Console. Now I can see that it's created this Node.js directory. It's called Node.js because that's what I just called it on github.com when I created that repository. I can cd into this, change directory, and do ls or dir or whatever. And um, you can see what files are in it at the moment. This is where I'm going to be creating my source code. So we'll create source code in the next video, I think, and we'll also look at how to check it into Git. Okay, so until next time, happy coding.